we are joined by the writer John Feinstein. <laughs> I think he's gruntled. I think he's entirely Are, are you gruntled. fully gruntled, John? Isn't disgruntled fan kind of a, a, a redundancy yeah, uh-huh. in most cases? Is there such a thing as being gruntled? I, I don't know. I, I, I can be grumpy, but I don't think I've ever been gruntled. <laughs> if there's a diss, there must be a regular... Well, I, Tom, you're the smart one in the group. I had doubted it. Oh, um, oh, uh, boy, I couldn't have said it better myself. I know it's not yeah. chick. So. Uh, thanks, See, buddy. I knew it was coming. Yeah, only yeah, I'm, 18 I'm, seconds. I uh, so, Dan Schneider is a fine human being. And <laughs> yes, I, oh. sure he is. <laughs> no, John, <laughs> when yeah, you... And, 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 no, I'm not going to get into politics. It's just too easy. What, who, were you, who were you a fan of when you were a kid? Oh, all the New York teams. I grew up in New York. I, I was a Met fan. I was sadly a Jets fan. Um, an Islanders fan. Uh, I was a Knicks fan, uh, but gave up on the Knicks when Pat Riley was the coach because he's such a despicable human being. Um, <laughs> and I even rooted for Columbia, for crying out loud, oh, an army you. in oh. football and basketball. Wow. Thank you very much. Um, yeah. Interesting. Do you, do you, as a journalist, I guess you have to, can you root for anybody now? Do you still? Yeah, you know, when you're not, I've always said um, that the notion of objective journalism is, is ridiculous. Nobody's objective about anything. We all have biases. But as journalists, you try to be aware of your biases and be fair at all times. Maybe you don't succeed all the time, but that should be your goal. And if I'm sitting here at home watching the Islanders play or the Mets play, of course I'm rooting for them. Um, Less so the Jets because I did a book on the Ravens a few years ago, so I have relationships with with the people there. Uh, and as I said, I gave up on the Knicks years ago. I actually ironically became a Celtics fan when I was doing the Red Auerbach book and spending time with Red. Um, but, yeah, you, you, I understand that I'm all, there, there's, for one reason or another, you're never objective. You can be in a tennis match, you can be rooting for straight sets because you're on deadline. Um, so there's something, some reason to root one way or the other in almost any contest, and you just have to be aware that you're biased as a result and, and, and take that into account when you sit down to write. So, you, John, as, a, as an Islanders fan, you've probably yelled some things at Mike Milbury. <laughs> uh, I, I cannot, uh, even if we were on satellite radio, I couldn't <laughs> use the word that I would like to use on Mike Milbury. Well, yeah. the, 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 I hope I never, ever meet him in person because he's bigger than I am and wouldn't respond well when I punched him in the mouth. Yeah. You but missed the audio. We have audio of a fan in the in the back of... Uh, they're, they're doing a broadcast and this guy suggests that perhaps uh, Mr. Milberry have coitus with the city of Nashville <laughs> prior to his swift, <laughs> his swift departure. I would yeah. just like Mr. Milberry to go away. Yeah. I no, I don't Apparently this guy does too. Harm. I just want him yeah. to go away. Yeah. Now, I did you watch the, uh, the French uh, Open yesterday? By I time? did uh, during the... Tw- 27 minutes that it lasted. Yeah, yeah. right. Oh, wow. That's, it was, it was, it was, I watched a little bit of it yesterday. It's yesterday. extraordinary, particularly on Clay. Um, you know, he's won 15 majors, 10 of them at the French, and his dominance there, I, I, I think guys walk on the court against him when, when he's healthy, which he is now again, and the match is basically over. Almost, You, you realize he lost 35 ga- games in seven matches? That's five games in three sets per match. Wow. And Vavrinka's a hell of a player. Yeah. yeah. And he destroyed him. Yeah. Mm. Are, you, are you at a piano bar? <laughs> uh, I am uh, on the other side of the door from my daughter who oh. is practicing. Oh. Oh, okay. oh, she sounds good. Yeah, she does sound good. Sounds good. Yeah, yeah, that's we, we don't want to discourage her. By oh, no. Going no. Out saying, I'm on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> I did that once years ago. It's a famous clip, actually. You can look it up on YouTube. I was... Uh, talking to Jim Rome, and um, my daughter Bridget was, I think, two and a half. Jane, who's playing right now, is six and a half. Um, and her older brother had a drum set that was just outside <laughs> where my office was. And she came down while I was talking to Jim and decided it'd be cool to play the drums. And it got to the point where I couldn't hear what Jim was asking, so I put my hand on the phone. I said, Bridget, please stop. And she ignored me, of course, as all children do. Mm-hmm. Um, adults ignore me, too, come to think of it. And so finally I went, I'm sorry, what? And Rome replays that clip every year on his, on his end of the year show. And it's probably been, well, Bridget's 19 now. So it's been 16 or 17 years. Hmm. Now, uh, uh, do you get a lot of calls when something bad happens to Tiger? Yes. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I, yeah. yeah it's just, I don't know. I, I, I just think it'd be great to see a giant come back, but... 
I guess is physical. Well, physically. what I'd like to see him more than anything is get physically and mentally healthy. Yeah. I mean, I think it's pretty clear he's neither right now. And the irony in this last situation was the Wednesday before this occurred, it occurred on M- Memorial Day early, you know, after midnight, um, he posted on his website, uh, feel better than I have in years, yeah. finally pain-free after this last surgery. Uh, and I, when I read that, um, because there was no news in it, even though certain, some people tried to make it into news, you know, oh, Tiger's coming back! Um, I, I thought he was posting it strictly for the purpose of reassuring his sponsors. I'm going to play golf again. Don't give up on me. Don't terminate my contracts or anything like that. Five days later, he's stopped by the police. He's, you know, literally passed out on, on various painkillers. Um, uh, my guess is that this wasn't the f- first time that he'd overdone it with the painkillers. It was just the first time he unfortunately got into a car. Uh, I think there's an issue there. I think he's very unhappy. I think he has been for years. I mean, when I hear a guy talking constantly about, I'm so happy, I'm, I have the greatest life ever, I'm spending time with my children, and blah, 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 I think the guy's miserable. <laughs> and I, yeah. I think he's miserable. Yeah. And, and I think it goes back, frankly, to the way his father raised him to believe that the only things that can make you happy were winning and making money. And, and, and he raised him to not trust, don't trust anybody but me, no one else. And then, of course, he betrayed him by cheating on his mother. So, I mean, I think it would take a team of psychiatrists to figure out what this guy has been through. It's, it's hard being that famous. Well, it is, but but other people have handled it. Mm-hmm. I mean, Jack Nicholas was that famous, and he handled it. Arnold Palmer was that famous, uh, and he handled it. Uh, I, I think Peyton Manning was that famous, and he handled it. I mean, there's a whole list of guys who handle being famous. Michael Jordan, um, sort of in the middle, um, good moments and bad moments. Um, but it is. You're right, Tom. It is that hard being famous, but I don't think that's an excuse for mistreating people. Yeah. Who's, who's the funniest of all the giant sports stars you've met? Funniest? Well, it's not Bob Knight, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Coach has his moments. Uh, oh, Jim uh, humorless, yeah. Yeah, the two, two. Jim Valvano and David Ferrity. They are the two funniest people I've ever known, whether famous or not. Um, and and in, in different ways. I mean, uh, both off-the-cuff funny, not scripted funny, off-the-cuff funny. Um, but uh, David's funniness, as you guys know, with, as with a lot of comedians, uh, comes from kind of a dark place. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, he's dealt with alcohol issues and, um, uh, and, and all sorts of other problems. Valvana was just flat out funny. I mean, right, right until the day he died. Oh, of the sports figures that are sort of semi-active now, who would you like to see make a comeback? <sighs> Tom Seaver. <laughs> well, that'd be a story. That would yeah, be, be a story. story yeah. it? Maybe the Mets wouldn't be so god awful. <laughs> um, huh, you mean guys who still might realistically yeah. have a chance to make a comeback? Because uh, usually when you're done, you're done. Although Nadal just proved that's not true. Uh, I uh, see. I'm not. I'm not a fan of Tigers because I've seen him mistreat people. I think it'd be a great story. There's no question about it, uh, and it would be good for golf. There's no doubt about that, too. Um, Federer's already come back and won a major this year. I'm just trying to go through the sports in my head. Um, due to baseball. What, about, what about LeBron and the Cavaliers tonight? Are they going to... Well, that's a great question, Chick. Yeah. My God, record that. Oh, John Feinstein says okay, Chick asked a great John. question. All right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> here's what I will say. The Warriors should win. Fred the Allen. circumstances are different than last year. Draymond Green is not suspended. Right. Steph Curry is healthy, and there's this Durant guy on the team right. who wasn't on the team last year. Having said that, if they don't win tonight, the Warriors, then they're going to start to get nervous. Mm-hmm. Because they're going to have to go back to Cleveland for a game six, and that would be t- difficult. And if the Cavaliers were to stretch it to seven, they're going to have all sorts of deja vu thoughts in their head. Uh-huh. So they had best win tonight, would be my answer. Mm. Now, are you going to watch? By the way, LeBron doesn't need to make a comeback. He's still pretty good. Right. Do you feel forced, <laughs> do you feel forced to watch everything? Uh, yes and no. Uh, I, 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 with... You know, the NHL playoffs, the NBA playoffs, football playoffs, baseball playoffs. I know I'm going to have to talk about them to different people. I'm probably going to have to write about them. 
So, yeah, I feel like I, I, I should watch. Frankly, what I often do, because I have this six-year-old who does, it gets up very early in the morning, um, I DVR uh, the games that start, like tonight's game will start at 9.15. Of course, I'll be in Milwaukee tonight, so it'll be 8.15. But normally, if I'm home, I'll DVR the game, and then get up. when I get up early in the morning, I'll watch it, which means I don't have to deal with the commercials and halftime and all that other stuff, so that I you know, am at least up to speed. Uh, and I do that a lot during the college basketball season because, again, those 9 o'clock games, I'm not staying up till 11.30, so I'll DVR them and, mm-hmm. and watch what I think I need to watch or watch what I want to watch, which uh, is often a different thing. Are you, are you good at withholding your, an opinion when you know you haven't really watched the game? Oh, if I haven't watched the game, I'll say that. I'll say I didn't really watch the game. I'll just be honest. Yeah, I mean, nothing I'm nothing not worse than getting up. caught. I'm not going to make it up like some of my colleagues do. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, well, I see everything. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and you're still making it up. Yeah, yeah. I'm still making it up. Yeah. Sometimes some of these guys, you're going, how is it possible? That you uh, they'll they'll call up and ask questions about college hockey yeah. you're in the middle of it. Go, there was a guy here in Washington who was a talk show host for years named Ken Beatrice. And he sort of made his rep by being able to give you a full scouting report on any college player you asked about. You know, he had a New England accent, he's high-pitched, and you, 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 you'd you ask about um, Chick McGee. Oh, you know, they list him at 6'4", he's really 6'3 and a half. That's right. Weighs a good 272, uh, can run the 40. They say he runs the 40 and 443. My people tell me it's 470. Wow. He has these people. Who were imaginary, as it turned out. Right. So, one day, uh, an old columnist named Mo Siegel, who was around Washington for years and years, called in and asked him about a defensive tackle from Florida State, John Smith. I'm making up the name, obviously. And Beatrice went into his entire scouting report about him. Mo Siegel made the guy up. Oh, <laughs> oh man. Oh, so, that's, that's what you call winging it. Yeah. Well, wow. Now, speaking of making stuff up, uh, we're talking with John Feinstein, the great writer. You, you've got uh, some novels out there and other books. Do you have any Father's Day recommendations of any well, of books that you may I have do, written? Tom. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I mean, there, there are a lot of them out there. You can't get them all. There are. Um, the, my most recent nonfiction book, which we've talked about in the past, is The Legends Club, uh, which uh, is about Mike Krzyzewski, Dean Smith, and Jim Valvano. Uh, and it's now out in paperback and uh, would be a great Father's Day gift, I think, for if you're a basketball fan. I have a new book coming out in October, which I hope to talk to you guys about on last year's Ryder Cup. It's called The First Major. You can't get it now, but you can pre-order it. Cool. Uh, and um, uh, I also have a new kids book coming out in August, uh, called uh, Backfield Boys, which is brand new characters, uh, and it's it's set at a a prep school that is kind of based on IMG Academy, which is at Jock Prep School down sure. in Florida, mm-hmm. and it, it, it it's an interesting, uh, I think, story involving uh, race in sports and in our country. Did, did you go research it down there? Uh, yeah, because I, I what I did what I what I did was. I'm, I placed the school outside of Charlottesville, which is an area I'm very familiar with. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and, and as I said, based the school, not totally, but at least partly on this IMG Academy where kids basically, the, the, the come on for IMG Academy and some of these other places is send your son or daughter here and they will get a college scholarship. But of course it costs like 60 grand a year to go there. So it sort of defeats the purpose. Yeah. Of right, it. it's kind of a push, isn't it? You can it? get a college scholarship, but you're paying sixty grand a year for high right. school. Um, but anyway, <laughs> it's, the, the, it's a football book, and it revolves around uh, two pals from New York, one black and one white, and I'll leave the rest uh, to your imagination and what occurs when they both get to that this imaginary school. Oh, but, uh, available now, however, is the Legends Club. And the Legends Club is available now, and uh, Last Shot, still, which is my first kid's book, the one that won the Edgar Allan Poe Award, mm-hmm. um, still continues to sell, and it's been out for 12 years. All right. Which is amazing and pleasing. Do, do you happen today. to know, uh, in, in the last few years, how many of your books sell online uh, versus uh, for, uh, in words, go, go it's, it's apparently up to about 40% uh, and when Amazon first came online it was like under 5% and it's just kept creeping up creeping up through through the years um, to the point now where uh, on Legends Club I actually saw the numbers and it was almost 40% yeah what about uh, the audio book 
format. The audiobooks do not sell as much, but again, they have continued to go up in sales. Now, let's just say uh, and, and one of those Kindle, books were to... Kindle has gone up, too. Or, what, or, what if one of those audiobooks were to be read by, say... A Chick McGee. And they would sell zero. Oh, oh, oh I was hoping you'd go the other way with that. a little that. harsh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, see, I have to say that because I read my own audio. Oh, okay. Stuff. That's why I presented Clearly, it that way. My, my voice on, on those books triples, quadruples the sales. Oh. <laughs> from <laughs> now, from does three your, to four. Right. Does your editor ever say delicately, you know, John, um, we noticed that uh, if Ben Affleck were to read the book. Well, I, I think if it were a video... They might want Ben Affleck to read the book. But for an audio, I think I'm okay. You know, I've always said I have a great radio face. Okay. Well, John, it's always a pleasure. The Legends Club is uh, one of uh, John's most recent books. Might be a great Father's Day gift. It's always a great pleasure to speak. Are you going to give us a... Can we ask for a prediction on the NBA Finals? Uh, I, I'm going to predict that the Warriors will end it tonight. Yeah, I, I, okay. I just think they're a little too good, especially playing at home. So mm -hmm. if you're a Cavaliers fan, now you have hope. Okay, and oh, last quick question. Do you ever wear a team jersey, or in the case of hockey, a sweater, while watching a game? And... No, okay. I don't. I do, I do, uh, I, I do own uh, an Islanders coffee mug. I also have a San Jose Sharks coffee mug because I think it's cool. <laughs> and uh, George McPhee, who is the general manager of the new Vegas Knights, sent me a really good-looking Vegas Knights pullover. Oh. Which I don't wear to watch a game, but I will wear it to go outside. Okay, oh, very nice. good, very good. Well, thanks, John. It's always a great All pleasure. All right, guys, great to talk to you. Thank you, John. Bye. And